This is the Ridge Hunter Outdoors Podcast. Hey everybody, this is episode 62 tonight. We got everybody back in here, so we're going to do our end of the season campfire episode. It was one of our, has been, since we started one of our most popular episodes, so I definitely wanted to get back in and do another one. And just kind of talk about, I know me and Nate talked about a little bit uh, back in December maybe, <clears throat> about how the season went and what we thought and things we might change. Thought we might have some thoughts on the food plot we could talk about and just how the season went in general. It's what we saw, or all that kind of stuff. So we'll just go around the table to start with. <clears throat> no, you we're on your way. <laughs> no, I don't want to go my way. Things work clockwise you're, around here. You're the only one who killed the buck this year, so. Oh, whatever. It wasn't much of a buck. I yeah, mean, but it was a buck. It did have male genitalia, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, I hear an awful big today's word. the way things are going in society today. It doesn't necessarily have to be required. <laughs> well, you know? he, he might he might have. Uh, Wait a minute! In our world, it absolutely has to be required. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, he might he might have considered himself a doe. I don't know. Either way, he had it enough antler on his head. You had to use your either sex tag. <laughs> yes, I mean it could have went either way, but you know, I decided that. You know, hey, I just thought. Of hey, something. what? <laughs> I D N R. If you've got a if you've got a doe tag and you kill a buck, you could tell them, hey, he it identified as a doe. He told me his last words, his no, dying breath. It told me. Yeah, sorry. They told me <laughs> last dying breath. I'm a doe. <laughs> yeah. So you could put your tag on her antlers. He let out a bleat. on her antlers. <laughs> yeah, he let, he out, a let out a bleat. <laughs> Damn, <end. laughs> a doe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think it'll work, but yeah. well, you know, uh, Tim would probably frown on that just a little bit. <laughs> oh, gee, you think? Me, I, I'm thinking, you know. So, so Tim, if you're listening, I did tag my buck as a buck. <laughs> so, you know, we'll, cl- we'll clear that up right now. Yeah, yeah. So I did use my either sex tag on him, even though you know it's like, eh, but yeah. <laughs> whatever. You got your meat filled in the freezer, didn't it? It's the only one killed this year, right? Uh, yeah, it's the only one I killed this yeah. year. Yeah, actually, yeah, I mean, it's the only one I really had a good shot at this year. Um, seems like every doe that was around knew that I was there, you know, and mm-hmm. they let it be known I was there. So <laughs> pattern, it is. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's Jeff. I ought to just write Jeff's button underneath it. You should, because they just like (laughs) seek me out, Uh like heat-seeking missiles or something. I don't know what it is. Yep. Well, that was what, middle October? No, it was October 28th. Okay, end of October. I couldn't remember. Yep. You know, I I always told you Halloween was my favorite, Mm -hmm. and so it was right there in that that deal. I know what happened. Uh, Later on, me and Scott figured it out. We got talking about the scenario and everything, and you know, that's about, I was hunting there by the public ground, mm-hmm. and that's about the time the people, other people start hunting the public ground. Yeah. And with the wind and everything being the way it was, they literally jumped that buck up and pushed him towards me. You know, and so it worked out in my favor mm-hmm. because I was wanting, you know, I was wanting meat for the freezer and, and help some friends out and stuff. And so it worked out fine. Yeah. But, you know, there was no reason for that deer to be there at that time of day. And Other than he, he just got bumped by some, he, he got some bumped guy walking by somebody in. walking in on the north side of the property. Yeah, and we talked a lot before the season about hoping that your drop tine deer from last year would show back up. You never did see any sign of him, did you? No. Got some decent young bucks on camera, but never that yep. one, right? Yeah. I mean, I got some decent two-and-a-half, three-and-a-half-year-old bucks. Mm-hmm. They have potential to be something. But I pulled my camera after or right before shotgun season. I never put it back up there. You know, I just took it down there to my property and left it there all all winter. Mm-hmm. And we got some decent bucks, you know, on my property. You know, we seen some nice bucks. We have several different deer on camera. Yes, you one know, of them's dead. They are. Yeah, I was in the shop during shotgun weekend. 
Oh, that one. Yeah, well, you know. We're talking about after that. Oh, we're talking okay. about after okay. that. Yeah. Well, I was going whole season because we did have a decent couple of decent deer there, you know. But yeah, but the, the um yeah, we're, the ones that have made it through. We're post shotgun Yo. season. Okay, is what me and him was like. Me and Scott was post melee like, people, huh? <laughs> yeah. Most people. Yeah. Well, you know, and so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we was looking at, and and we we got some that made it through, and you know they're nice young deer. They got good frames, and you know give them an, another year, and especially if you give them two more years, mm-hmm. they'll be dandies. But you know, I think that the most probably the most promising thing about it is we've seen them more than once. So yes, it's not like you've got a travel buck, Nate. You talked mm-hmm. about different times. It's not like they just came through and went on i mean i'm not saying that's their home range but there's some well, potential there for them to be there yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we we can see them once and then we can identify them again the next time only one deer one buck i remember that was very distinctive that we only saw once and and i know where he's at i've been told where he's at yeah he's been spotted around and you may have him on your cameras in the woods mm-hmm. we just didn't have him on the outside no, cameras we didn't have him on the edges right so mm-hmm. The food plot there, you were just saying that, you know, we a lot of, like, throughout the season we saw them hitting that clover as long as it stayed green, which they're still we knew would clover. happen. They're still yeah. hitting that clover. As long as it's green, they're going to be on it. That, clo- that clover is on the south side of the property, mm-hmm. and it's getting full sun right now. You know, it's protected by the woods. Uh, the only real cold temperatures we had was when we had the wind chills of minus. Yeah, for, like, those – that week yeah if, minus, if that minus 50 or whatever <laughs> 20, you know, minus 26 it, it don't matter when it gets below zero it's cold <laughs> i i seen some eskimos and yeah. buggies at home i mean it, mm-hmm. i don't <laughs> doubt that a bit <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but you know but there was a blanket of snow there was a thin blanket of snow and ice on there that insulated the clover from that bitter cold and you know uh, what few days later was back up in the 40s and 50s and so that clover never i mean it's kind of gone dormant but it's still green and Mm -hmm. all of our cameras my camera that i moved over and scott's camera's been there the whole time it still shows them they're just pounding that clover they're they're pounding it Mm -hmm. and so and that's a, one of the few things left green this time of year. That's the only thing left green. Yeah. So, and you were just telling me before too, they just started hitting the beans, <laughs> and then some of the brassicas on the other side. Which, what I was saying, <clears throat> I think a lot of that probably has to do with the f- same reason our clover still hasn't gone dormant is because we only had that one week of really bitter cold, and other than that, it's been fairly mild. So, really, until now or until over the next month and a half. They may not hit those too hard. Yeah, and when we did have that cold snap, I had my camera on the north end of the property, and the farmer that farms that, they're next to me. He'd left, what, a 10 by 100 foot mm-hmm, strip yeah. of beans. Mm-hmm. And you could see them on camera because I have it on video mode. You could see them. I mean, they, when that snow was on them, temperatures was cold, man, they were stripping them beans. Yeah. Was in them. Yep. The only thing left there now is just, bare stalks you know yeah. they, they stripped them clean yep as far as the corn that are around the food plot they ain't touched it mm-hmm. you know which is fine yeah that's fine is is mostly there for a cover anyways yep you know as a screen from yep. the road and that but they ain't touched the clover they've just now really started hitting the beans there Mm-hmm. I they're giving four to six inches of snow this coming week i think when that hits they'll start hitting the beans even more. Yeah, they may clean those out. Yeah. Depending on how long it stays. Yep. And like I said, the the grandpa race mm-hmm. what what was that? We Southern put, Jubilee is there. Southern Jubilee. Mm-hmm. They started finding it and eating on it just a little. I mean, they're not hitting it hard. They're just mm-hmm. kind of sampling it and stuff. But I think the You think once that clover gets covered up or goes completely dormant, they'll start hitting the I think they'll probably start They'll hit the beans. They may hit the corn a little bit. Uh, the thing about the corn, the standing corn, you know, it's hard for deer to really get through the husk and mm-hmm. 
and so they kind of eat the ends of it, what they can get to. Yeah, unless you mow it down. And, you know, if you mow it down for them and scatter it out, well, then they're going to hit it pretty good. Mm-hmm. But uh, they ain't really bothering that. But I think, you know, the beans, and they'll dig up them roots through the snow mm-hmm. of that Jubilee because, you know, they know they're there and they know it's the nutrition source. They can smell yeah. it out and stuff. So Yeah, I'd say there'd be a pretty good window between – when everything finally does die or go dormant and before spring green up, that they'll hit those pretty hard. I think I'm interested. I mean, and again, got, it's the first year we planted them there too. So we got Scott's camera on it, mm-hmm. you know, so yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Just, just see what inventory and just yeah. curiosity more than anything. Yeah. Just see what they do. Cause we've never really inventoried that property like any year span. Yeah. Right? You know, and right now they're, Oh, we've seen a couple of bucks. One of them, obviously was broke on one side mm-hmm. one of them it appeared like it had dropped one side so mm-hmm. we're still doing some inventory on that but it, obviously that's going to go away before long and it'll come back but. and we've seen bucks on the food plot yes you know some of those we talked about that be good next year yep. or even mm-hmm. the year after yeah they'd be better the year after i think they're just three and a half year old bucks right now but uh you know I, i'm pleased with the way things yeah. went yeah uh, they pretty well did everything that I thought they was going to do, you know, and, and just like I said before that food plot, it's an, it's just a feeding zone. It's a feeding plot of a night mm-hmm. because you got the road and you got neighbors, you got my house and stuff and dogs, that's, you know, dogs and stuff. cats. Yeah. Yeah. We do have some cats on there. Don't we? <laughs> rabbits yeah. <laughs> yeah. house but, cats not not yeah house yeah, cats yeah. Not, not not like what they got south of orchardville yeah not jaguars and i was pumas. wondering how long it'd take to get there <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here we are i had the thought earlier when you set up around home oh man yeah but you know uh <clears throat> I, I saw an advertisement for big cat safaris so <laughs> if you guys you are interested to, you might want to set that up if you guys are interested, I hear there's some around south of Orchardville. Yeah. So. Just go on up there and start looking for them. Is that Orchardville, Kansas? Right in the grasslands of Kansas. <laughs> there you go. That a boy. It's up there south, the south of Orchardville. It's, all, it's a big area up there. But, you know, you go out there. I don't think there's a season for them, so it may be one of those deals like if you're coyote hunting, you just go ahead and shoot one and it's legal. I'm not sure. Like elk, you know, because you, yeah, there's no seasons. <laughs> Either way, I wouldn't bring him home. So, I mean... <laughs> I mean, I think we just just get a search party together of all the willing participants and go up there, and they ought to look for him. I will organize the search. Will you? And I'll cut them loose. <laughs> I think you should. Jeff will organize the party. We should have a competition. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a search party. Search? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, you can't I have one without no. I wouldn't think. No. I will organize. Well, I'm not searching for anybody. They can go look for the cat. <laughs> organize the search. I'll see who all shows up, and we'll see where we want to send them. Uh, and I'm not going to stick around and see what they find. Uh-uh. I'm I, not gonna... I know they ain't going to find it. <laughs> I promise. They'll find something. <laughs> So I was going to say, if they're willing to come look for a jaguar or a leopard, a black leopard south of Orchardville, they I might, ain't going to look for them when they get lost. They might find a Bigfoot wearing a, a sock hat, homemade clothes, and a big old beard. <laughs> yeah. But they won't find that cat. I know there's a few of them south uh, of Orchardville. All over Orchardville. Yeah. That's half the population up there. <laughs> well, they're all related. Well, Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking that cat's just moved on. Oh, I bet he's still around. <laughs> well, probably in a museum. <laughs> best, best, According to the picture, I mean, that's just what best, I'm guessing. The best comment on Facebook, and they said, no, this was southeast of Orchardville, and somebody got on there and said, I agree, about 7,000 uh, miles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, South yeah. Orchardville is a lot of territory. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Fairly vague. Yep, all the way to the equator. Yeah. Anyhow. <laughs> it's on Facebook. It had to be true. Yeah, that's right. Yep. I think we should get a party together and go look for it. No. We'll get. We should start a Facebook group. Let's start at Rio de Janeiro. Okay, <laughs> a, I think that's where we need to start at the south of south of Orchardville Cat Hunters Facebook page. Hey. And we can organize a big Nate will organize a big meet for them, a date and time, and then just cut them loose. Yep. We'll and see. turn your pager off for like a week and a half. Yeah. We'll send you out there and see what you find. Uh huh. Man, some sure of those no telling. Some of those comments were just incredible, dude. That <laughs> one was that you sent me oh my that took gosh. the cake. 
we went on quite the journey. Yes. In a paragraph, like a couple paragraphs, it was yeah. yeah. Oh, the guy man. could spin it, man. <laughs> I'm just amazed at all the wild creatures that people have seen oh, around yeah. here. I didn't even know half that stuff existed. Mm-hmm. Makes you scared to go out in the dark, don't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And not of what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> More of the people talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's quite the ordeal. Anyway, where were we? I don't know. Me neither. <laughs> you lost me. They we went off on a tangent for some reason. A big tangent. They were yeah. going to get in the corn when it gets real cold. Yeah, I don't know that they'll get in the corn so much until I knock it, it, knock you, it down. Yeah, or the clover just completely gives up. Mm. Yeah. See, that's kind of a catch-22. I think if you knock it down, they're less likely to freak with the food, food plot. Yeah, right. Mm. Because of sc- where it's at. Yep. yep. It gives them a good screen. It does. Well... Right now it's pretty thin, but yeah, throughout the season it, it was pretty it good. Could be yeah. better. Uh, throughout the season it was okay. We, we've Jeff and I have talked about it. You know, maybe planting it thicker. I think we don't if care we about could add some, some more rows. To, that's what. To, yeah, if we could add a few more rows on the inside. Yeah, you know, I'm at the least looking at looking at it. What we did this year, uh, we could add more screening. Mm-hmm. We may ha- need to move some things around. Mm-hmm. Come up with a different plan for the fall forage you know i don't i don't know well that's why we still got the cameras out there so that way we can record and decide what we want to do according to the fall forage but uh you know as a whole it's pretty well done what i expected it was going to do and what i was hoping it was going to do you know i knew it was going to be a feeding plot and i knew it was going to be at night just because of where where it's located Mm mm-hmm and but it, at the same time is still somewhat holding deer on that property. Well, they got to come to it and go away from. You're it. holding yeah. some does for um, sure. Well, yeah, we got a doe group. Mm-hmm. We got uh, this old, and they're benefit from benefiting from it. We got this. There. This we got this old doe that I call Big Mama, and Hunchback. And, no, no, it's no. not Hunchback. Okay. I, I just call her Big Mama. She's a big old doe. Yeah, and she's got. I, think I killed her sister. I'm not I think sure. you did. Yeah. And she was a big old gal. So too. she's got at least maybe two of her own, and then the orphan of the one you killed. <laughs> yeah, but and all the know, one I killed was dry. Well, that's she true. She was, that. wasn't she? Uh, that so, might have been the one Marley got. It might have been. I don't know. Or the coyotes got Marley drug up. We yeah. don't know. But anyways, you know, uh, I got big mama and three offspring from this. this what spring. about the deer? And so, yeah, I mean, and and so they're there regularly. They're staying there all the time. And I got some bucks that we're starting to see regularly there. You know, we can identify. Whatever them. we do with the plot, we'll we'll run the drone over it and we'll post that as well. Right. Yeah, I'll can and, plan to continue the fry property vlog once we get back yeah. to doing stuff on it again. Well, if we when 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 we make changes or when we do something, we'll drone it and show it. So mm-hmm. and the hunt the hunting plots in inside the woods, um you know, the woods is finally recovering enough that it's shading a lot of that out and so yeah. they ain't working too well. You know, I actually mean, they are some but not a lot. There after the leaves fell off, we got a little bit of growth back there yeah. from that inner sanctum that I'd planted. Yeah. But it was you know, late October, November. Too little, too late. Yeah. It, we just were fortunate that it was mild enough in October and November that the soil was still warm enough that when the leaves fell off, it got enough sunlight to germinate yeah. some of that stuff and a little bit of moisture. But it didn't come up great because, yeah. like you said, it's getting so thick in there now and the canopy and all that. Oh, that's Jeff's Bible verse. It must be 8 o'clock. Yeah, it's yep. 8 o'clock. So... It's getting thick enough over the top. It's just not getting enough sunlight yeah. the rest of the year. So, and that's and that, I think that's an advantage to um, where we got our feeding food plot at. As long it's as they what, still have the forage down low where they've got it, yeah, right. But what I'm saying with that, it, where it's on the south end of the timber, mm-hmm. it's protected from the elements from the north and west, more or less. Wouldn't you agree? Mm-hmm. And then, and it's still getting the full warmth and so the soil is staying warmer on that side which keeps the the greens more vibrant than what they would be normally this time of year mm-hmm. I'm, i've been shocked about the clover i, I have stayed too. greener longer than i thought now they've kept it down 
<laughs> oh, goodness. There's yes, not a lot of new girls because they eat it. They eat it. That's what it's there for. <laughs> but That's I, that good Ridge Hunter Outdoors food plot blend. Uh, it's Grandpa Ray's, ain't it? Nope. Oh, it really is? Yeah. Ridge Hunter. Well, oh. I wouldn't lie to you about something like that. Well, I'm out. <laughs> I'm I, out. Didn't, well, I didn't know what you put out. You just said, here it is. And we threw it I out. I bagged there. it up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You got so much going on. I don't know. Not that Grandpa Ray's wouldn't have done just as well, but I thought I might plug that while you were bragging on it. And okay, well then you the walked bridge. all over it, Jeff. <laughs> hey, you know that's all right. Whatever. I'm a high stepper. <laughs> <laughs> got no choice. So, <laughs> pretty much. Are you bragging or complaining? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> at this point, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Six one way half dozen there. Yeah, best. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the Ridge Hunter Outdoors plot blend, you know, I mean, has survived the. I think you're right. I think the only reason it has survived this long is because the, the warm when we sun. when we got that big cold snap, it had a little bit of snow on it. Yeah, that was kind of a little bit of barrier from the. Yeah, and we've had stuff. temperatures averaging in the 40, upper 40s and 50s and stuff, and so yep. it ain't really hurt it too much, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, uh, we need to start thinking about frost seeding mm-hmm. here Next real month. quick. You know. Generally, like February, mid-March to mid-March. Yeah. <laughs> yep, filling I got that in, on the Filling in agenda. some holes and stuff. Because, and, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I mean, there are some places that it's pretty thin and, you know, fill those in so that way we don't have that issue with that dad gum tea weed and everything else yeah. we fought this year. Yep. You know, which even that stuff that. will take it over if you ain't careful. Yeah. Even if we're fighting that, I think it turned out really well. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. And I'm the alfalfa alpha did really well. Yeah, so, I'd, li- I'd like to throw some chicory in there. Yeah, we'll have to frost seed some of that down. Uh, I'm a real big believer in that chicory. I've had good luck in, in the past. So, mm-hmm. yep. So, like you said, like we'll definitely update the YouTube channel on that stuff when we do more on that, and then I'm sure we'll talk about it going forward as well. But, and like I, I told Scott, I said, you know, here antler drops coming up soon. Let's mm-hmm. get that drone out. Let's fly some fields. Mm-hmm. They're around, around that, around. Have you ever tried that, Nate? <clears throat> no, and we see haven't if, either. We're going to. We're going to, and see if we can't spot some sheds out. I mean, get yep. my drone out and see. Yep. Um, if it's any good or not. I mean, yeah. it, it may work fine. I'm not. If anybody has, you can shoot Canyon a message there on his, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on his, uh, I think it's, I think it's a handy social media pages and whatnot yep. and tell us whether you've had luck at it. Yeah. I think yep. it's a handy tool to use if you got it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, it's a huge couldn't. scouting tool. I don't know how it could be. And so oh, for scouting, I don't know how you could beat it in an open area. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like what we're doing with that food plot, just to keep it a, Keep a log on our updates and whatnot. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I don't. It'd be interesting to see if we if we get any antlers, on right? It or not. I I think it would save us a lot of footwork, ground pounding. I'm all stuff. about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. As as old as I'm getting, uh, yeah. In my physical condition, <laughs> side by sides and groans. Uh, it's over there. Go get it. Has done. <laughs> has done. Do of age, huh? <laughs> okay. Yeah, and really, we're clear on that. Well. I was going to say it worked pretty good for you up there where you're at, but that CRP, it might be kind of tough anyway. Yeah. yeah. When we burned last year, we found a set. Mm-hmm. Um, I have found a set in field fires. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Hopefully not in the tar. No. No. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, we do find a set or two laying around. It's, mm-hmm. it's surprising, but you can, yeah. Yep. A lot of guys find them that way when they go burning and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They kind of stick out like a sore thumb at that point. Yep. They charm them a little bit, but. Yeah. Not uh, too bad most of the time. Uh, those guys over at Kale, they had a big, I think it was just, uh, I think they was just burning for somebody. They'll do a lot of that over there. They just burn patches, you know, uh, controlled. And they found a bunch in that one patch, a bunch. I think them guys was going to knock on the guy's door and say, hey, we want to come back in different <laughs> clothes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yep. 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 So that was, after you killed that buck, you'd hunted, you hunted, down there a little bit and around your place for some deer that we'd heard were around and then never could get on any of them. No. Kind of that was... I, uh... (laughs) Well, you know, I was tied up here at the shop, which is fine because I expect that every year. 
you know, and so, I mean, that's just what me and Scott does. And so when we got caught up and that's where I could go hunting, you know, it's getting late season. Deer, deer, I mean, they hear a twig snapping. They're, mm-hmm. they're just running. They don't even care. They're just getting the heck out of there. The wild Kansas deer. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know. It, you got all that open to run through. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, I, I was out there just hunting. I, actually, all I want to do is just kill a doe. Fill, you know, get one more tag in, get a little bit more meat in the freezer and stuff. I could not buy a doe if I had a thousand dollars to spend on one. I mean, it was it was ridiculous, wasn't it, Scott? Yeah. And yeah. you know, he went with me a few times and I mean we just you could you couldn't find a deer. Well, and this, we know that we're bun th- this time of year the deer are bunched up. Mm-hmm. You know, they're in their winter bunches and stuff, their herds and that and and they was bunched up. They just wasn't bunched up on the property that we could hunt on. Yeah, you're either on them or you're not. Yep. And yeah. Not to, we didn't hunt your property. No, we did not we, hunt. We didn't try to hunt your property because if they were bunched up in there, which obviously there were some in there, yeah. we didn't want to push them out. Yeah, we were so just going to leave them alone. We were hunting the outskirts of some other property we had permission to be on, and they just weren't there. Yeah. And a lot of that was because, you know, there were some guys trapping and stuff, and so there was a lot of activity there that normally wasn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it had an effect on them or not, I don't know. I kind of feel like maybe they did. You know, you get side-by-sides running through there twice a day or mm-hmm. once a day or whatever, you know. Non, not normal human activity. Yeah, you know, they're yeah. going they're going to be wary. Especially that, late season. You know, and then, of course, we had the full moon coming in during that time and so they was mostly moving of a night and so I mean it made it rough and uh that property south of here in that other county by the state ground I hunted it a couple of times. I mean you hunted it once. We hunted it once. Didn't see nothing but I was pleased with the what I did see because what I did see was that where I had planted that uh, throw and grow mm-hmm. seed, you know, and just make a little fall plot there and stuff. Man, they have tore that up. It looks like hogs have went through there. And they have a path where they come, wherever they come from, to that plot. And then down the little roadway that I made, that I mowed, mowed down through the brush so I could slip into my stand, they got a path three inches wide and an inch deep in the ground, you know, where they've been running mm-hmm. through. I mean, it looks like, it does look like a cattle trail through there. Mm-hmm. So they're using it, and they're using it good. Now, whether they're using it at night or whatever, we're right there, but. Yeah, and you don't have a camera on it to tell. I don't have a camera on it to tell. Right. But I was pleased with that, that I, you know, at least I knew I was pulling them off of the state ground to that location. They was feeding their probably staging before they went mm-hmm. out to the cornfield of mm-hmm. night. And so I was happy with that. And, and you know, looking that over and stuff, uh, kind of come up with a game plan for the spring, you know, putting in a clover plot, a clover and chicory plot, where I want to put stands at because I found out that where my stands at now doesn't really work for mm-hmm. that situation. So, you know, move move a stand and, yeah, you know, it, it's like I've always said, I've told you before, whenever you hunt a new property, it takes about four to five years before you really figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. And once you get that figured out, well, then you can, it, it's a game changer. Especially when you're going and putting in food plots and stuff, that's always yeah. going to change stuff. And then. If you're bumping any deer at all, that would change them a little bit just because of the added pressure to it. Yeah, and a lot of it depends on uh, where we're at. A lot of it depends on the crop rotation, too. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, next year, it'll be beans on the <coughs> south end and corn on the north. You know, so that's going to change everything. Mm-hmm. But at least you kind of, if you pay attention and stuff and know what's going on you can kind of give an idea of how how to play that to your favor every year where your stands need to be this year 
according to crop rotation and that and where they need to be next year and you know you can work around it Mm -hmm. but like i said it takes a few years of observation and that to accumulate that knowledge yep so that was in a nutshell your season yeah it sucked (laughs) i mean i i I had no really. I, I mean, it was a good season for what little bit of time I got to hunt. I mm-hmm. really enjoyed it, and I was thankful that I was able to be go go out there, harvest a deer. I was thankful that you know me and Scott had time to go out there together and hunt because it's been years. It's since been a while. Together, yeah. you know? It's been a minute. And so you know, all in all, I can't complain a bit about this season. Mm-hmm. I mean. And, and I've made it clear before, I'm not a big trophy hunter. You know, I'm out there to fill my freezer. And then after that, this whatever happens, happens, you know. But, you know, I am I feel like I was blessed, and I was happy with the way the things turned out and enjoyed my time out in the woods. You know, I didn't make it a job. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I went when I wanted to go, and if I didn't feel like going, I didn't go. And so... And I think, to me, that makes it more pleasurable than just forcing yourself to go out there and be miserable. Mm -hmm. So I had a good time, and I can't complain about this. I've learned a lot about it, about the deer movements and stuff this year, and so I'm looking forward to next year. Mm -hmm. Now, you killed one, like you was mentioned earlier, maybe Big Mama's sister or Passed she off was the spring. biggest one in the bunch. Uh, she was big, big mama. <laughs> she was she was a big deal. That was back in October, right? Yes. Um, you probably got to hunt more this year than you had in a while. I did. Seemed like it. Um, I don't, I think I just got in the mood to hunt more early than I had before, and and I'm like Jeff. I don't force myself to hunt because I feel pressure to to hunt. I hunt when I want to, and if I don't want to, I don't go. Um, I felt like it this year, like, you know, we started doing the food plots and the vlog and, and all that. So I hunted more early and, uh, she presented herself the second time, which was her mistake. <laughs> and so she didn't <clears throat> blow at you though, did she? Nope. What was How about I say you got what one up on me? Story on the first presentation. They all came by mm-hmm. and I gave them a pass. Just out of nobility. And, well... <laughs> Yeah, well, that's you know, what we'll that's what we'll go with. Basically, I just yeah. like you know I don't. It's okay. I'm sure I'm, it was nobility. I'm I'm having a good time watching these deer. It's Me too. Okay. And then a couple of them started to come back my way, and I thought, "Oh, gal, you're big enough." Mm-hmm. And she just kept coming, and I thought, "Well, here we go." So yeah, it was. I don't know if you've noticed this, but we're not the most noble bunch of guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I gave him a pass the first time. If it's just, if you make the second mistake, that's your that's on Fool you. Fool me once, that's, that's right. On you. Shame on, shame yeah, on. Well, you. whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, right. That's on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. And I had I hadn't dropped a hammer on one in a while. Yeah. And I was going to let him go because I didn't mm-hmm. really care. And then the second time, I thought I haven't dropped a hammer on one in a while. Yep. So I let her fly, and she ran out there, and I watched her fall, and mm-hmm. I texted Jeff and said, you know, doe down, and long story short, we brought her home, but yep. the weather was good. I felt good about going. Um, at the time, <laughs> go ahead with the time. You just text me, I got combines and tractors and four-wheelers and wagons. Oh, I've been there before, but at the time, I thought, <laughs> at the time, the shop was not in the point where I could, didn't feel, felt bad about taking it. Was, it was a weekend, I'm sure. Was it a Saturday or Sunday? I think it was Saturday. Yeah, so normally we close at noon, mm-hmm. uh, and but I always get calls yeah. almost 24-7, it seems yeah. like. But at the time, you know, uh, my wife wasn't doing that much, so she was taking the f- cell phone. So if we got any calls, I wasn't going to miss them. I had to mess mm-hmm. with it. And uh, uh, so anyhow, it was the right time for me to go. The weather was good. And then later on in late season, by the time we went, I went with Jeff the second time to that property south of here, and we went a couple times. We were talking about being mm-hmm. bunched up. Most years, I don't care if I see another deer or not. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm to the point where I'm done. 
you know, I'll take care of your deer, but I don't really want to kill my own. Yep. Um, but this year, again, I didn't care if I killed anything, but it, the weather was good. Mm-hmm. Um, we still, we all, uh, Jeff and I and Hunter, my daughter, we still had turkey tags. Mm-hmm. And so we thought uh, it was worth, you know, we'd seen turkeys a couple we times. We had a bunch of turkeys. We did there. a couple times. So, you know, that was worth going. And we didn't see any deer. We did spot some turkeys and got what I would consider reasonably close once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it turned uh, into more of a turkey hunt than it, it kind of did. But the weather was good, so I didn't mind the sit. Yeah. And again, that's the time of year where I'm not busy enough that I can't go. But I was in the I was in the frame of mind to go, mm-hmm. which usually doesn't happen in yeah. December. <clears throat> so that was kind of my season in a nutshell. Um, the sh- as far as the shop goes, um, bow season numbers continue to grow. Uh, I base that on the uh, the change in the laws in uh, with the crossbows. The crossbows in uh, Kansas. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> or Illinois. So those numbers can t- continue to make good hunters out of bad hunters, mm-hmm. or good shots out of bad shots, and and. It's a lot more accessible too. Uh, guys yeah. my age and 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 in Jeff's shoulder condition can hunt and pull bows back where they used to couldn't. Mm-hmm. So those guys can get out in the woods and still enjoy themselves. Where they, they were thinking, man, I'm at the end of my hunting career. Mm-hmm. So that helps. Those numbers were up again this year. The first shotgun season was up for everybody I talked to. <laughs> The conditions were right. The rut was right. The weather was good. The population's mm-hmm. good. The the deer herd uh, health is good. They just hammered us. Mm-hmm. Everything else after that was fairly normal. Mm-hmm. Now, as a, as a caveat, last year we seen more bigger racks. Mm-hmm. This year we seen more bigger body deer really more like the year before last yeah so last year i think was one of those anomalies where we seen three at least three legitimate 200 inch racks yeah. i'm not talking about you know my brother-in-law says he kills it and, it, and we scored it when we were drinking beer and it, you know, i'm talking yeah. about legitimate 200 inch plus mm-hmm. deer yes we probably hadn't seen three 200 inches in the previous 20 years combined mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This year, uh, it goes back to what our normal is around here. It's a lot of 160s, a lot of 180s, maybe touching 190, but not that much, mm-hmm. which around here, around our shop anyway, oh, is yeah. fairly normal. Oh, yeah. S- but the bodies, I would say, maybe average 20, 30 pounds heavier oh, this year. Oh, my gosh. It's like mm. skin and beef. Even the does were big. Mm. So I was talking to some people, and they contributed uh, some of that maybe to the drought that we had. Mm-hmm. We didn't have the blue tongue that we've had in the previous past because of the drought, mm-hmm. but they felt like maybe something triggers those deer to put that food towards their bodies and not their racks yep. mm-hmm. as a matter of just uh, survival. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, whether that has anything to do with it, I don't know. I just know what I see in the shop. I yeah. think it has a lot to do with it. It probably, well, we talk about it all the time that antler growth is comes from excess. So mm-hmm. yeah. if mm-hmm. they don't have any excess, they're not going to have any extra antler growth. Or if they don't feel like they're going to have any excess. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how much that plays. But anyway, that's what we saw in the shop this year uh, in a nutshell. Um, uh, last year, not, not the summer of 22, but the summer of 21, was also an exceptional growing season for crops in this area. Mm-hmm. That's what yeah. I was going to say, too, is at the beginning of their growth stage, they would have been really good food sources for mm-hmm. them because we had a wet spring. Yeah. I really mean, good growing season. When I was when I was shelling corn uh, for my father-in-law uh, a couple of times I run the combine, I was watching the spout monitor, and it was just unreal, mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. some of the numbers that you would see. You'd never seen them numbers before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and then once you got towards the end in that drought, it some stuff died. So it could have been the fact that they put on their extra body weight that they were going to have anyway, and then they didn't. When it came to the excess for the antler growth, it wasn't there later in the summer. I mean, there's obviously a correlation, but yeah. I think because at that point they're not going to eat as much corn because it ain't ready for them to eat yet. They're still going to eat the green leaves on the beans until they start to turn. Mm-hmm. But you know, in the spring they'd had a ton of corn to eat. Yep. You know when it's coming up. I think the guys in the shop will all agree that 
that that was the case the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all I know is back there skinning, uh, the does we was getting in was the size of the bucks we used to get in 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. It's um, like the herd is healthy. Yeah. In this and area, the herd is healthy. It's like you get a button buck in, and it's like, oh my God, thank God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we whipped through that in two minutes, you know, and then yep. and then all of a sudden you had a whole line of beef. Beef. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was just. You were talking about seeing the racks in the shop, and it was like last year, even on social media and stuff, there was just a lot, seemed like a lot more bigger rack deer. Everybody mm-hmm. was killing 180 inch deer, you mm-hmm. know. I mean, hell, even Nate killed 178 inch deer. That never happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so, correct. <laughs> correct. But this year it was kind of the same way. Like, take the big buck contest, for example, mm-hmm. which uh, technically 21, 20, it'll have ended by the time this airs. So the winner, unless miraculously someone turns something in tomorrow, this being Saturday, will be 155 inch deer. Mm-hmm. Where last year it was 178, mm-hmm. and then one under that was 174 mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I forget what was under that, but and then like where you're at, there was plenty. I mean, 160, couple 160 inch deer. Oh, uh, running around last year. Last year was just the 170s. I, I but it seemed never, like everywhere. I never remember that. Yeah, what I'm getting at is everywhere last year, even on socials and stuff, people mm-hmm. were killing big deer. Mm-hmm. Antler wise, and then this year it would just wasn't quite the same antler wise, and maybe the. I think this year's back to it. more what 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 is our new normal for yeah. us? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think the I new normal is the one sixties to one eighties, maybe touching one nineties now and then. Which still, when you look at that compared to twenty five years ago, we're in a lot better place as far oh, as my oh, antler size goes. Goodness, I mean, yes. Which is like we talked about what maybe caused last year is I think a lot more guys are doing a better job managing. Mm-hmm. properties and and deer herds you know and, and that's why at least getting, trying exactly yeah and that's why i was going right to way. say 25 years ago the mindset was different than what it is now well mm-hmm. you even look at the outdoor channel and watch a tv show those guys at that time were all killing three and a half year old deer yeah and that was a mature buck and then it slowly got to four and a half and now it's up like these guys are five and a half six and a half year old bucks or older and that's what guys are seeing on tv so that's what they're considering mature bucks, which is, it's the truth. I mean, that's a mature buck. Yeah. So as that stuff, as you start to see it on there, I think it trickles down into the And all that has to do with herd, Mm -hmm. herd age and herd health. Mm -hmm. 25 years ago, somebody bring a deer and bring it in the back door of the shop, I could tell you what county it came from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of the the age of the herd and the size of the deer. Well, that come from this and this county. Well, how'd you know? Well, look at the deer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not so much now. Yep. You know. I mean, they're all, most of the does are covered in fat, you know, good big does. Uh, a lot of healthy, healthy deer. But I think that speaks to the management mindset of guys now yeah. versus where it was, and which has to do with a lot of things. But I do think the mainstream guys have a lot to do with that because that's where a lot of people still get their, what they base what they're seeing off of, what they're seeing. Might be one of do. the few good byproducts of leased ground mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That a is lot of your guys that lease ground aren't coming to to our county they're not spending mm-hmm. to lease those ground to kill 140 inch deer yeah they're not mm-hmm. spending thousands of dollars to kill no yeah. no i'm a three we're, we're going to leave the lease ground out of this whole thing as far as a controversy but i think that's a byproduct of it mm-hmm. is those guys aren't spending that kind of money mm-hmm. to kill a 140 inch eight pointer mm-hmm. yeah so yeah, and that and that's you could in the past be the one guy in your neighborhood to try to do that, but you're still going to have very limited success. And now it just seems to be more widespread now. But yeah, it didn't seem to be the case this year as far as the antler size down a little bit, but the body's still pretty big. Oh my lord! I don't know. <laughs> if we were ever going to get the ramp cleaned off or the first weekend. It's just the all ramp. Day long. Hell, what about the street that was out there? <laughs> yeah. the I told walk, Jeff four yeah. days after season, I said, we're going to run out of freezer space. We're going to run out of cooler space. We're going to run out of totes. <laughs> we're going to run out of everything but deer. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> and we did. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. No, as, we as, ran out of time. <laughs> we ran out of energy. Yeah. I don't think we ran out of beer. Um, we might not have. Mikey, Mikey made sure of that. <laughs> Mikey, kept, Mikey helped yeah. us out with that. Yeah, he might have been the cause of running out and not running out. Oh, he ran out of everything. Coming close to running out 
while keeping it replenished. It was um, it was a year. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of hard work, but we have all in all, we had a lot of fun. It's just another year in the books. Yep, just another year in the books. And uh, what hurt us the most was that first season. Everything came at one time. You know, yeah, this, Friday, this, Saturday, and Sunday. This wasn't a record year for us, but it was a record that everything come at one time. Mm. Right. As far as the the rut and, and everything, the bow season, well, I think the, the, the last part of bow season came in, mm-hmm. and then the rut, I mean, it just it hit everything just right. And you start packing, you know, 50 percent of your kill ratio in about five days that that, yeah. that makes everybody we stressed. still got more people hunting now i think than before some of that left over from the covid year when everybody started hunting i mean a lot of people started hunting and then again like you said the bow season with the crossbows and then this the whole first weekend was good hunting weather Usually we don't have three solid days of good hunting. You usually weather. have rain or it's ice usually or... seventy degrees one day, or yeah. it's pouring down rain, and it just didn't happen this year first season. Right. I mm-hmm. think that had a lot to do with it. Yeah. The number of guys hunting and the the number of them actually out there because second season was average. Hell, everybody killed out first season, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Every tags left. Yep. And, and not only that, but also add to the equation that uh, a lot of other processors in the area quit taking deer Mm -hmm. i mean they quit taking deer and covid you know yeah i mean just overall numbers so you know we gain we gain here um yeah but i'm just saying we gain new customers your beef and hog processors that have been booked up since covid so Mm -hmm. yeah and they make more money doing that and they'd have to they'd go broke doing deer that's exactly right Mm. uh so that was kind of your season not only hunting but here at the shop too and we'll maybe get into a little bit more of it, but we did talk a little bit, Nate, about yours back mm-hmm. there in December. But yep. I don't remember what episode that was on. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. I think the title of it was "The Cowboy Returns." So if oh you guys, <laughs> oh the cowboy, if oh you guys want to go, wah, like, wah, wah. Yeah, if you guys want to <laughs> listen to how Nate's season went, mm-hmm. you can go listen to that one. Hey, that's coming up before long. Isn't yeah, it? it is. But yeah. that was only up the to like return. December. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you pulled cards since we did that podcast, yeah. and I'm really curious to see your thoughts on how the food plots did in the later part of the season and what you saw out there? Um, they did great. Uh, could not be any happier with them um, for the conditions that they had. Mm-hmm. Um, the The acre and a half of fall draw, um, they just they decimated it because it didn't grow very much because mm-hmm. we didn't have any rain. Um, I was very surprised that it did as good as it did. Yeah. Um, with the little bit of rain that it got, because it just didn't get any, you know, for like six weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. I somehow it got just enough to sprout. Um, but they did. They were out there. I mean, I had fifteen of them out there a night. Yeah. You know, um, and they decimated it. That's what it was there for. You right. know. Uh, but I would like to see how it would have done, um, if it would have been given a better chance. You know. Uh, but if they, it had turned out like the sprout patch plot. Correct. Um, because there was there was moisture down there in the bottoms and it was shaded. Um, and it was a good shade tolerant mix. The the inner sanctum down in the sprout patch was just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. It really was. Um, mm-hmm. Never ever got skunked down there. Uh, most of the time, was seeing fifteen deer down there. You know, um, it's uh, it's along a creek. The creek's a excellent travel corridor. Um, there's a thicket on the creek. There's a thicket on my side of the food plot. Um, and then there's uh, there's a big woods, 150 yards south. Um, so, I mean, it's, uh, it's a big hub coming out of there headed to the destination food, yep. you know, in the evenings. Um, and I hunted it mainly in the evenings. Hunted it some mornings too. It did good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they just, they hammered it, man. They were always out there. Yep. Um, and it did great. Um, the, and that one is the, the inner sanctum is the mm-hmm. clover, a few different types of clover and then the kale. Yep. And, uh, spring try to kale. Yep. Which um, is the, it's a winter wheat and, uh, winter rye hybrid mm-hmm. yeah um yeah it did great the clover down there is still green underneath um the kale i've actually not probably seen it in three weeks or so mm-hmm. um, but the kale was dying um you know after it got good and cold it was dying the clover was underneath it ready to go mm-hmm. you know 
but they hammered the kale. They hammered the spring trying to kale. They they were eating the kale, you know, the big leafy heads yeah. and everything. We um, got some video of them. Yeah. That night I went with you, I think. Yep. A couple I mean, of those munching on it. Yeah, they loved it. Um, that was the best camera by far. Well, the two cameras down there. Best best by far. You mm-hmm. know, that's where all the action was. Um, and they were out there at all times of the day because it's so secluded um, and it's so close to the cover, you know. Um, and my entry and exit was good there. Yeah. You know, for that Really line. solid. Um, very low impact. Um, so they were there all the time. Very predictable. Um, so uh, uh, food plots, they all did what I wanted. Um, just not as good as I wanted, um, the, the fall draw and the elite, uh, just because we didn't have enough water. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, if I would have had the water, I think it would have been even better. Yeah. I know it would have. Yeah, you know? definitely. Um, saw a lot of deer. Um, I didn't get to hunt near as much this year as I wanted to, uh, changing jobs three days before. Season. Kids will do that. And the little guy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, Kids will do that. Yep. I slowed way down. Um. I probably I probably went fifteen times. I'm guessing. Um, I passed the one. I don't think. Yeah, I know it, he was in the one forties. I know he wasn't one fifty. Um, but I did pass him. Um, he was busted up when I saw him. He had busted both both these brow tines. Yeah. I thought I'm not going to shoot him at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was down there on the, in the inner sanctum plot. Yep. Yeah. yep, down there in gun season. Um, I thought he's busted both these brow tines, and, and he seems to be staying right here. I'm just going to let him go. Mm-hmm. Um, I had it on him. I had the safety off, and I just didn't do it. I'm glad. Yeah. Because um, he made it. Yep. Um, him and two other four-year-olds. Uh, there's three. Is that, is that the noble thing? Um, We're going back to the noble cause. Well, thing? so when I had it on him, I thought, where is he going to go to when I shoot him? <laughs> <laughs> so it really wasn't a nobility thing. It's like, <laughs> how the hell am I going to get him out of here? Yeah. 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 He's, okay. a, he's, he's on the edge. I was just checking. He's on the edge of the thicket. He's on the edge of the creek bank when I shoot. He's going to cross that creek. Mm-hmm. He's going to go he south. You know, it, <laughs> yeah, it was all against me. If he was between me and the truck, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys might, might have been out. different. You, you might have been might a little less a, noble. You yeah, <laughs> you guys might have had one more deer to deal with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. um, but yeah, I uh, I did see him. Um, two other four year olds made it, um, and they hang around decent. Uh, the one that I wish was there. The one of the three that I wish was there the most is not. You know, he, yeah. he's the least. Because uh, I think he'd be the coolest next year. But anyway, um, they all did make it. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of little bucks, too. There's there's three other bucks that I, I never got excited about seeing. But, I mean, they're in the 130s. Yeah. Um, they're younger. There's no telling what they could do. Right. You know? um, and they were hanging right there, too. Yep. Um, th- there, was a lot of, there was a lot of deer around. I mean... As you guys have already talked about, you know, yep. there was a lot of deer around. Um, I saw some good chasing mm-hmm. um, uh, from time to time. Um, the one vlog video we have mm-hmm. from you this year was good with that, that young buck. That was a good a good yep. hunt. Down there in the sprout patch. Yep, I was able to get some video of him with my phone. Um, the one that I passed, he mm-hmm. was chasing hard. I mean, grunting great big and loud. I mean, yeah. they're crashing through, you know, just what, what you'd expect, you know. Yep. Uh, younger bucks in there swarming them. Um, another good hunt over there in the other county, in Marion County. Um, I had a big chase come through there. You know, I could just barely hear it, but then they made a circle by me. Mm-hmm. Um, now, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, just uh, just didn't get anything that I was, you know, really looking for. Right. Um, but, gosh, it was great. And uh, with everything that, we, that I saw this uh, fall, I have a lot of big plans for next year yeah. that I'm going to try, um, stuff that I want to do. We're going to um, have to take a timeout for Jeff. <laughs> Go ahead. Some things you want to change? Uh, so after um, after everything, seeing everything, how it all worked this fall, I do have some big ideas, uh, as long as I got the money to do it right. <laughs> yeah, you uh-huh. know, and time. Um, yep. Uh, I want to try to plant uh, some native grass. I want to try to make a huge food plot next year. Mm-hmm. Um and then hopefully another blind. Um, I might build this one. I might not buy this one. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we'll see. Uh, hinge cutting. I need. Uh, uh, I need to make that woods thicker. Um, the west end of that woods. I need to make yeah. it thicker somehow. Yeah. Um, whether I cut it or whether I hinge cut it, um, I got to do something to make that where they want to stay in there. Yeah. You know. 
Um, it's just, it's too open. It really is. Um, I got to do something to keep them in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and a thing that I'd heard a guy, uh, one of these guys wants to charge you a bunch of money to come look at your place and tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd listened to one of them and he said, if you can get them to move, try to give them a reason to move in a circular pattern on your property. Mm-hmm. If you can do that. And I think I like that idea. I mean, uh, keeps him there for more time. Mm-hmm. If he gets in here and he moves a little bit, you know, he come he comes on you, and then he thinks, "Well, shoot, there's something over here. I'll go check out real quick." And then he gets there and he thinks, "Well, there's a bedding area up there. I might hit real quick." Mm-hmm. Well, then there's food right down here. You know, if you can give him a reason, um, and like he even went all the way down to like uh, uh, what kind of edges they're really going to want to work. Right. You know, um, I uh, I wouldn't. I'm not thinking that scientific, but. But if I can get food and bedding kind of linked up mm-hmm. uh, every 200 yards or so um, was kind of my plan as to what I'd like to try to do this year, yep. this next year. Um, it take a lot of work, uh, potentially money as well, yep. you know. Uh, but I got big ideas based on what I've seen this year. Yep. And what you're saying is the longer he spends on you, the less time your neighbors have to shoot him. That, And then you can decide whether or not he gets to live another year. The, yeah. Which helps you manage your deer population for bigger deer, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. And uh, and if you can uh, if you can just get him uh, to travel past you, mm-hmm. you know, um, give, him, give him what he's looking for to move place to place. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you ain't hunting this food plot over here. Uh, but if he's cruising, you know, and, and you are over here, yep. um, get him... Uh, uh, get him, get him the stepping stones to get right. to you. Um, right. uh, if you can, if you can really figure out how to do that, yeah. you know. Uh, but like the wind, it uh, it did play a huge factor in all that, you know. Um, it's a nice idea. Yeah. It's a nice idea, but I don't know if I can really make it work or not. I'd like to try. It's worth a shot. Yep. Uh, now, like you're talking about. And it obviously depends on your goals. Like Jeff's talking about him not being a trophy hunter, and then. You know, getting out there when you can and just hunting to get back and enjoy doing it. But, like, where I'm at, and I think you're obviously you're kind of in the same boat as far as wanting to shoot big deer, Mm -hmm. like kind of why we were out there doing it, then I think you can kind of measure your success for the season. Maybe not whether or not you killed a big deer because Mm -hmm. you can only kill a 200-inch deer if there's one around. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So, like, in your situation this year, and I, you know, I think we we could say that man, you really want to kill mature deer, right? Not right. Necessarily right. big. We want to just, kill the most mature deer. Yeah. So what I'm getting at is, you had the opportunity to kill at least one of the most mature deer that I was aware of that uh, around. Yep. You know, and I think that's where you measure your success of the season because if mm-hmm. not, you drive yourself crazy mm-hmm. trying to kill a five and a half year old deer that's not there. Correct. You, know, you can only kill what's there. Yeah. So I think you kind of can measure it by. By that, in your case, especially this year, mm-hmm. like that's a, you got everything you did led you to the opportunity to kill one of the three, what we think is most mature deer on your property. Mm-hmm. I could have yeah. shot. Yeah. I, I had an opportunity to shoot. Right. right. I, that, the uh, safety was off. Mm-hmm. Safety was off. He's just too noble to pull the trigger. That's right. Uh, that's the cowboy <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't fan him with my six gun or nothing. No. <laughs> yeah. I, well, why I, not? I let. I let him go. Mm-hmm. But yep. And uh, was this we, high noon? Um, I hadn't been in very long at all. It was early in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. But high, at high noon, the cowboys at uh, <laughs> at the uh, restaurant though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You ain't in no shootouts. <laughs> um. Oh, we uh, also we talked about. Uh, you talked about a traveler buck earlier. Um, I did not have any traveler bucks this year. I do not know of any buck that I did not get um, uh, multiple pictures. Of, you know, mm-hmm. um, I did not have any buck that ever made a pass through there that ever hit any of the cameras. Right. Um, everything that I had, I, I pretty much knew who they were mm-hmm. um, of any size. Yep. Have you got pictures of those three bucks after gun season? Yes. Both yeah, gun they, season? they you made got it. pictures of all they three made of them? It. Yeah. I knew you they had two it. of them for sure. I couldn't remember about the other one. Yep. But they made it. So we had a couple on ours, but traveler bucks, but mm-hmm. they was small in stature. Mm-hmm. I think they just 
Roman because they was pushed out of by mm-hmm. the more mature bucks, you know, and stuff. So they just roaming around seeking what they could find. Yep. The first deer I shot this year was absolutely that. I'd never seen him before. I don't think even had I not shot him, I'd ever seen him after. He was all right behind the doe. Heard him jump the fence, heard him grunt, and then he showed up. She came across the food plot, and he popped up in the woods and then came across it. I mean, just right on her, as close as they're going to be following him without breeding him. And that's just what he was doing. He was on her. She drug him over there. Maybe she was from, maybe she stayed, spent time there or something, and they just crossed paths, and he followed her in there. But that's what he was. Never had any pictures of him before. Never seen the deer before. He just was there on her, and that was it. And then there was a couple uh, on the North Farm that I had that way this year, but they were even they were in December. Uh, that nice mm-hmm. mature eight point that I'd sent you pictures of. Mm-hmm. He was there after second gun season. I think he showed up. He was there once, but maybe between the two gun seasons or during second season. It might have been during second season, and he was there one more time. Hadn't seen him since. Never seen him before. So that was kind of similar too. And that could be a case of uh, shooting that ghost buck, too, because it was after I shot him, so this deer may have stayed out of there yeah. for that reason, yep. because ghost was absolutely the bull around there. Yeah. I mean, I'd watched him run deer off and had pictures of him running deer off, yeah, and stuff like that. So, But it, it's interesting that you didn't have any, because mm-hmm. it, it's kind of cool, too, though, that you know you kind of knew all the deer that were in the area. I, no, I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, but, um, you just running your cameras, mm-hmm. and I don't know how long yeah. you kept them up. Did yeah. you keep them up till the end of the season? Uh, I took them down like three weeks ago. Okay, uh, so you you close bass. to the end of the season. Did yeah. you see like a lapse? Because we see we noticed it on ours. You had, you know, uh, the main rut, mm-hmm. and you was getting pictures, videos, pictures, whatever of bucks mm-hmm. and stuff. And then there was a lapse there where. All you was getting was does, I mm-hmm. presume, because that's what we was seeing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they're at the end of season, which would have been would have been early January mm-hmm. to middle of January. All of a sudden, the bucks showed back up again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and what that, you know, I know what that is, is it's, it's coming back to. Why don't you tell us? To breed, you know, I'm, well, I'm going to okay. if you give me a chance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you know, if, you know what it boiled down to is they's come back to to breed the young yearling fawns and stuff that wasn't in season or didn't get bred yeah. the first time. Yeah, whatever didn't. And stick. so there there was a there was a point there that we noticed on our cameras that all of a sudden the buck activity picked back up again, and that's mm-hmm. what we attributed it to. Yeah, and I just wondered if you if you noticed that on your cameras also. Yep. Um, oh, the first part of December, uh, in the mid middle of December, it got pretty dead. Um, yeah. Uh, and I mean, they was all tired. You know, them bucks yeah. was tired. They'd been running, um, and then they wasn't smelling nothing to breed. Um, and then they was again, and then they really got put on a feeding pattern. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and then of course they're all feeding, and then when the ones do come back in, you know, those does that it didn't stick, or, or mm-hmm. the yearlings, like you're saying. Um, you know, yeah, they, uh, it picked back up for sure. Um, I'd already hung it up at that point. I thought, ah, you've made it this far. I ain't going to mess with you. Yeah, you threw the white flag out. I you sure told, did. Us, told us that earlier. I, sh- I sure did. Uh, but yeah, I, it was noticeable. I noticed just a difference in overall activity, not even just buck activity there. Like what you're talking about, middle of December towards the end. Mm-hmm. Just my cell cameras went dead. Like, well, I thought one of them quit working. Yeah, you know, they killed them all. Yeah, well, now it's <laughs> hell. I can tell you what happened yeah. there. <laughs> now I'm getting <laughs> damn lead poisoning. We processed them in this deer sausage. <laughs> hell yeah, <laughs> they're all in the freezer by now. Yeah, I did have a guy from Fairfield after like the second weekend of October. Um, and I mean they, these guys was killing you know deer. I mean fast uh, early this year, and he said, "Man, by the end of the year they're going to be extinct." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I about believe it. But I did start. Oh, here over the last couple of weeks or so, I moved a camera, that one camera, and I'm getting some more pictures of does and some young bucks and stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, there for a while it was really dead. Now I haven't checked. On December 20th, I got a picture of the biggest deer I was hunting this year at the cabin. 
And so I know he made it through both gun seasons, which is yep. good because I really think he's probably four and a half. Yeah. If he ends up making it through the winter, he could be a real dandy next year. Oh, yeah. He already is. Yeah. I mean, I would have shot him and not thought twice about it this year, but I haven't checked the other camera that's on the blind there since gun season probably. So I don't know what I have on there, but that other camera, that one eventually died. That cell camera did. So I don't know exactly what happened at the cabin other than like middle of December, it was pretty dead. And I got that picture on the 20th and I didn't get much after that. Uh, I haven't checked that other one obviously, so I don't know there, but that's, yeah, definitely noticed that. And then other people I talked to noticed the same thing as far as the activity going down. And we're actually, I mean, they're at the food plot. We're actually starting to see more activity now. And I think, a lot of that attributes to the fact that the clover hasn't went dormant, you know, and mm-hmm. so there, there's still green clover and they're keeping it mowed down. But I didn't get to tell you, Scott, because, you know, I've been at work, but uh, Wednesday night, you know, it poured all day Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And there's a little bit of break Wednesday evening when I was coming home. And within 500 yards of my house and the food plot, I counted 12 deer Man. right there crossing the road. I mean, they crossed the road right from Man, I was all excited about it. I was like, all right, you know, we got this herd here. They, and of course, you know, they're all bunched up. They scatter out, you know, in the spring and stuff and fall. But, you know, it, it's like, okay, we still got a good herd population going on. You know, it wouldn't hurt too bad during shotgun season and stuff. And so... You know, there's a lot of potential there, and I'm I'm hoping the cameras will will reveal that I pulled them over to the food plot. You know, but like I said, they was within 500 yards of the house and where the food plot is. So I'm kind of excited to see what the cameras show me here in the next couple of weeks. And mm-hmm. so I've got one last thing, and then we'll kind of wrap it up after that. But we'll go around. One thing you would have done different this past year or would have changed going into the season (laughs) for whatever reason, whether you think it would have helped a little more as far as killing a deer or or whatever. One one thing you'd have done different that you're either – maybe you're going to do it different next year or maybe you just thought it would have worked for this year and not next year, but one thing you'd have changed or just about the season in general. Start with me. Sure. Okay. I think that one thing I would have changed was I would have paid more attention to my food plot down south, mm-hmm. and I was selected a better stand location. You know, uh, it was my first time putting a food plot there, and so you know we picked a good tree. Mm-hmm. The tree was perfect it's for the just, information you had. Yeah, the tree was perfect. It was just not on the right side of where. It needed to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, I'm going to retire soon. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe I'll get to hunt the rut. Oh, okay, know. I got you. <laughs> you know, I thought you meant to bed. No, no. <laughs> Either way. Either way. <laughs> but, you know, uh, you know I'm, trying to get, I'm trying to get things situated and stuff to where whenever I do get to where you know we slow down or whatever we decide to do with this die or, you know <laughs> no I, if I die well then it ain't gonna matter anyway but you know kind of slow down and get to where if I, you die can we plant clover on your grave so we can uh, hunt over you well, absolutely okay Just I don't check. care and <laughs> be more good fertilizer <laughs> yeah because you're definitely full of shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but you know I, i'm trying to slow down more you know i'm in my, my i'm in my mid 50s and so i'm trying to slow down more to where i can get to the point where i you know i can hunt during the rut and stuff and i'm looking i'm trying to build things up to that and get the deer going that direction and stuff and and I, you know, it's a process, and I, I don't know. It's just, it's just one of them deals, and I'm looking forward to it. You know, if I live long enough, and but I'm happy with 
the way this year has turned out. Mm -hmm. And happy was the time I got to spend, you know, I got to see a bobcat, you know, out of the stand, walked right under me, coyotes. You know, we've we've just had a good time. It's been really good. This is most time me and Scott spent together out hunting and stuff, and we've had we've really had a good time with it. What about you? One thing you'd have either done different or changed from this season as far I, as hunting go? Yeah, no, I don't I don't know much I'd done different. Um, time is my factor. I think I want to continue on the same path and maybe try to get another day or two of hunting. Uh, in my situation, uh, the days I take hunting puts more on someone else. So you have to be at the shop or Lisa has to be at the shop or somebody has to be there. So anytime I go away, somebody has to step up. And so I'm, I'm conscious of that, but I, I want to continue that path. Like Jeff said, we, we had a, I had a lot more fun this year during deer season than I've had in a long time because I've, I've, you made time. I made time for the first time in a while, and I enjoyed the crap out of it. I really did. Yeah. And then late season was warm enough that um, I got to go hunting with Hunter. I haven't been hunting with Hunter since she was like six years old, yeah. seven years old. So that was cool. Um, so that's where I want to do is continue that path, yeah. if that's called a change. Nate, uh, about August 20th, I'd have got my drum and my feathers and my loincloth, <laughs> yeah, and I'd yeah. have been in the front yard doing some kind of rain dance. I would have liked, uh-huh. liked for all the money I spent on the seed. To, <laughs> I thought he would actually say that. <laughs> <laughs> if it had yeah, brought, I'd I have watched it if it had brought rain, <laughs> I'll tell you. Rain. We I don't it. know that I would have watched it. I mean, <laughs> I've watched just... a lot worse for a lot less. <laughs> 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 Maybe not on purpose. <laughs> yeah, seen a lot worse. I don't know. Yeah. Watch it. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. It I was. didn't want to watch that either. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you did. <laughs> you had one eye open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if we could have got some water on them plots, that'd have been good. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, I had considered trying to buy an old fire truck at some point, you know, um, and and trying to water food plots mm-hmm. um i mean if you can't if you can't get rain i guess you can make your own you know yeah um several i mean a lot of guys do that yep yeah. um but anyway uh i i just wish them plots would have done better because it, it would have been even i know it would have been even better mm-hmm. you know especially the one new plot that elite I, it just didn't do nothing but it just baked i yeah. mean it, it it just baked where it was at it, it got full sun all the time um, and it didn't stand a chance because it didn't have zero no water. rain. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, but, uh, but no, as, as far as anything I could control, I can't think of nothing I would have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, the sprout patch did pretty much exactly what I wanted it to do, what I thought it would do. Um, it was, uh, there was a lot of deer activity down there. That was the big, my biggest change for the year. Um, so no, I, I can't think of anything that I would have. Right now, that I would have said that I would say I would have changed. Mm-hmm. Can I add something there? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you don't have to ask permission. The the one thing I would have changed, I would have never bought a turkey tag. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Last year I didn't have a turkey tag and I was beat to death by him. Mm-hmm. And this year I got a turkey tag and I could not get on a turkey. To so next year you don't buy a tag and I will. We'll go together. There you go. Yeah, okay, Tim, don't pay attention to this. <laughs> we didn't say you were going to shoot it. Yeah. We'll go together. You don't have a tag. You see the deer, and, or you see the turkeys, and I'll I'll be with you, and I'll shoot them. That'll I'll work. have a tag. It's yeah. up on the up and up. It's on the but up and up. We'll get, we'll get her done. Save your $5 and buy four eggs. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah. thinking. Yep. I think for me, one of the big things recently that happens every year, I'd have hunted more in the late season because I always say I'm going to. And I never do. I don't get out as much after a second gun weekend as I should. And I had deer around. Obviously, that one buck was still around, which a lot of years I don't after second gun season. But I knew I did this year, and I still didn't get out after him. So that's something I'm going to try to do next year. And part of that is the food because we didn't have the rain. Mm-hmm. I think if I'd have had better food for late season, I'd have maybe been a little more apt to go. But not much I could have done about that. I maybe could have bought a pump for out there at the cabin. But, you know, it would have been for one year. Of food plots, so I'm maybe using I'm probably use it again in the future, but who knows? You know, we might get two, three good years in a row. So, but that and then the other thing I would have done definitely 
is after I shot that first deer at the cabin, I would have changed bows before I shot at ghost on the 17th. So I shot the deer at the cabin on the 13th and didn't find him. And then I shot ghost on the 17th, which was the day before gun weekend. Mm -hmm. And I told myself I need to do something different. I need to change something. I talked myself out of it. And if I could go back and change it, I'd have switched over to the bow that I've been shooting now, which I shot that doe with there in, I guess that was December. But mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'd have changed over to that that week. And I'd have done, even if I didn't change broadheads or anything like that, I'd switch that bow. I'd just shoot it so much better. And it would have been, I think, even just a mental thing of mm -hmm. a little bit more confidence and all that. And then maybe would have ended up finding him. And in my mind, that deer's dead. Hopefully someone will find him shed hunting, but mm -hmm. maybe could have put a little bit, got a little bit better blood trail and mm -hmm. a little bit higher shot or what I think happened, maybe been a little low, but a little bit higher shot might have had a better chance of finding him. And had I switched that bow, I think that probably would have happened. But mm -hmm. those are like the two biggest things for me because, again, every year I say I'm going to go more in the late season. I don't. I shot that last year. I think I shot a deer, a doe on the last day of the season, which was one of the only days I'd went after second gun weekend. And then the day I, the night I shot that doe, this year I think was the last time I went deer hunting. So I'm gonna try to do more late season hunting next year. But that's pretty much what I got. Anybody else got anything they want to add for the end of the season episode? Wrap it up. All right, we'll go over to the business side then, and take care of our sponsors since they take care of us. Grand Prairie Outdoors. We talked about them a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. Nate's got. All his plots this year were done in them. Mm -hmm. Your plot was done half in it. The plot there at the cabin, uh, both of those were done in Grandpa Ray Outdoors. Everything we planted of their stuff, we've been really happy with on our properties, on the client properties. You guys hear us talk about them all the time. Really good seeds, some of the best in the business. Uh, we've even had word from some guys that uh, in the industry uh, who will shower name, n remain nameless, that brag on their stuff too, uh, talking about, you know, a lot of guys maybe claiming they use certain stuff, but then ended up using, you know, Grandpa Ray stuff anyway. So what they do is, you know, in our opinion and a lot of other guys' opinion, they provide the best nutrition for white-tailed deer on your property, and that starts with the soil with what they do. They've got a full line of high-quality food plot seed and plant foods. They actually started in 2015, but John O'Brien, uh, who's the owner up there, he's been in the business since 1991. Right now, they've got over 14 different food plot blends to choose from. So whether you're looking for grains, fall blends, spring blends, switchgrass, uh, they've also got liquid fertilizer, soil test kits, whatever you need for food plots, they've pretty much got it. And they're not just about their products. They'll answer any questions you've got about what blends would be best for your specific property. That way you can achieve the best results possible and get the most for your money. They don't believe in a cookie-cutter approach to that either. So they're going to take your situation individually. They're not going to tell you to do the same thing in Georgia as they would tell someone to do in northern Michigan, more than likely. Uh, we Again, we've used their seeds. I don't know how many hundreds of pounds of Grandpa Ray Outdoor seed that I put in the ground, but have always been really happy with it. If you guys want to support us and get yourself some good food plot seed because we're coming up, like Jeff was talking about, with some frost seeding and stuff, we're getting really close to food plot season. It's right around the corner. You can go to GrandpaRayOutdoors.com. Use discount code RHO podcast, all lowercase, no spaces, and you get 5% off your order there. We've also got some of their stuff in the shop. I'm going to try to get some more of it in as well. Our other sponsor for the podcast is Rack's Big Game Supplements, and they're a veteran-owned company out of northeast Nebraska. They're deer hunters just like all of us. Uh, at the time when they developed their products, they were looking to get more out of the market than existed at the time. Uh, they, Through years of research, they came up with, one of the best mixes available that's going to help improve your herd's overall health, which right now we've talked about, again, is really important. Any added, anything you can do to benefit those deer right now when the food source is low and they're not getting all the nutrition maybe that they need in your area, that's going to be beneficial. So Rex has got minerals, protein blocks, pelletized feed, and meal, meal feed all specifically designed for whitetails. You can use discount code RHO22, and that's capital RHO22, at checkout and receive 5% off your entire order at RaxMineral.com, R-A-K-S Mineral.com. You can also stop by the shop and see what we got in here or make an order for what we don't. We've used their stuff over in Missouri. Rodney's on some of his properties. Got some nice pictures from over the summer, and uh, we're probably going to run some stuff. I'm going to see if he'll want to run some stuff 
this winter as well and just see what turns up on those cameras also. But I know Dallas has had some luck over there when, when we put that out over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got some decent pictures and decent activity there yep. as well. Other ways you guys can support, you can go to RidgeHunterOutdoors.com. Use the discount code RHOPOD. That's all caps. And anything on there you see you want, you get 10% off of it. So go check it out, RidgeHunterOutdoors.com. You can also find the uh, information on our consulting and management services that we do. Um, otherwise, you guys can support without even spending any money. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That really helps us out, and it can help you guys out too because we're still doing that giveaway. Uh, it's a Wild Game Innovation Spark 2.0 trail camera. Wait a minute. I didn't know we had a giveaway. I've been talking about it for weeks. I didn't know we had an Apple Podcast. <laughs> We've well, been we busy. Yeah, I know. Some right? of us poor folks have been working. Tell yeah. us about the giveaway. No. <laughs> well, while you guys Honestly, been working. I no, I didn't know it. While you guys have been working and I've been sitting on my ass, we started okay. doing a <laughs> right. Wild Game Innovations Spark 2.0 trail camera package. It's the... Just similar to what you guys got last year. Um, it's the trail camera, it's the batteries, and it's the SD card. So you just put the batteries and the card in, set it up, you're ready to go. I think it's valued at about 90 bucks for the whole package. All you got to do to that get what we got? entered to win that, I think your guys' is from Muddy's, but it's a similar package. Okay. We like it. Yeah. yeah. So all you guys got to do to enter that is go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. It takes like Two minutes, one star, five stars, doesn't matter. When we hit 25 reviews, we'll draw a name from that list, and then that'll be the winner of that trail camera giveaway. So, And don't you put 24 in reviews in there, Nate. <clears throat> Are we eligible for I'll that? Still be, I'll still be the one that... Go for it. Huh? It'll, it'll be the other guy that gets it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 The one 25 to 1. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I hear you. You can also follow us on Spotify if that's where you listen to us. That way you know when everything comes out. And then on YouTube, we've talked about it a little bit tonight. We're going to add some more content there as far as the Fry Property vlog goes. We did do the season vlog this year. I uh, put several videos up on there. So you guys can see kind of what I was talking about. Some of the hunts we had. Uh, Nate had that one good hunt on there that we did get put up on the page. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when everything comes out. Also, like and comment on those videos. That helps us in the algorithm on YouTube. Gets us out there for more people to see. So, We're also going to be back at the Iowa Deer Classic this year. Um, when I get a booth number, I will let you guys know. I'll be able to go this year. Hide the women and children yeah. because the women cowboy is going to be yeah. back. Men, in, hide your women and children. The they're, they're Are cowboys. you coming, Nate? Really? I think so. All right. I'm going to be there. My schedule is out already. Um, I'm off that weekend. I'm going to try to um, clear my schedule for that. I had a yep. good time up there. I really did. Me too. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. Yep. That'll be March 3rd through 5th. And again, as soon as I find out what booth we're going to be in, it should be the same one as last year, but about waited long enough now that We'll have to see how it works out. When I get it, I'll let you guys know, and I'll put it on our socials and stuff. That way you guys can know where to find us and come say hi if you want to. We'll probably do another recording while we're up there. What? All four of us up there together? Oh, yeah. It's a lot. It brought me back to the old days when I used to go to the archery trade shows and stuff Mm -hmm. back in the day. It's a good time. It's really, in my opinion, for busy, busy Midwest. Whitetail hunting, that's kind of the mecca that show is. It they, don't get no bigger. Nope. I think the only one that maybe rivals it, and it's just in the south, is the Dixie, what's Dixie, it, the Dixie Deer, Deer Classic. Classic. The Dixie Deer yeah. Classic. It's a big one as well, but yeah. if you're a whitetail hunter and you want to go to a good show, Iowa is the one to go Not to. Not only they have opinion. show, they have, they have a, a plethora of racks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From old to new to yep. some you have never seen or heard before. And they do some good seminars up there, and they, they get do. a lot of stuff going on. You could easily spend a couple of days up there and, mm-hmm. s- you know, seeing everything, not see the same thing twice. So, Man, we almost seen a tornado when we were up there. Yeah, yep. almost. We had a plan. We did have a plan. Mm-hmm. We might die in that closet. But <laughs> we were gonna where we were going to die. I remember, <laughs> I remember you saying that. Yep. We so. got a plan. We're ahead of ninety five percent of these other drunk <laughs> people that's in here. Yeah. Never fear. I was here at home carrying on. So. Not, not that I we, guarantee you, ninety five percent of them people didn't have a plan. Correct. Not we the, had one. Not that we were drunk. They were drunk. <laughs> yeah. We when we were planning. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be back up there again this year. I'm also going to try to get us back down to uh, the Deer and Beer Fest in Illinois. I thought that was a really good show as well. I know they're going to make some changes this year. So. 
There's also the Deer and Turkey Classic, which is in March in Illinois, that I'm going to look into. Uh, I'm not going to make any promises on that one yet because it depends on when it falls with Iowa and all that kind of stuff. But I heard it was it was back last year. That's the one that had gone away for a while, and it did really well. So we'll look into that one also. But hey, rumor has it you may have another sponsor. Yeah, well, I'm, all right. Yeah, all right. We might have uh, another sponsor. Yeah, we've got a couple things in the works for you guys, and I. I forget what episode it was. I kind of talked a little bit about some new stuff that we got coming for this year, but that's a couple of things. We'll have some more, hopefully some deals for everybody that's listening. That way it can benefit you guys as well. And bringing some, you know, new companies and some more established companies, hopefully some more attention, some good people that we're going to be working with. I know Nate's had some dealings with uh, one of the guys. Kind of, He kind of mm-hmm. hooked us up with him. So when all that stuff gets finalized, you'll hear about it. Um, we'll probably have them on the podcast as well at some point, so that'll be good. That's all stuff that's coming up for this year and is around the corner. That's pretty much all I got for this week, so thanks, guys, for tuning in. It's been a good season, been a good year. Um, Looking forward to everything that's coming up. We'll catch you guys again next Monday.